This is an Ampex VR2000 videotape machine. It operates on the quadruplex system, also known as two inch because the tape is two inches wide, but it is called quadruplex because under here, the video head block, which is this large lump here, has a spinning disc which sits on an air bearing and that disc in fact has four heads on it uh, and when you record a television picture only 17 lines of a television picture are recorded in one stripe and then it switches to the next head. The tape is actually held against the head by this canoe shaped piece of metal here known as the guide. There's another little head here which is the head that records and plays back the control track. The tape path is quite simple. I'll just remove these covers here. The tape comes off the feed spool. It comes over this tension arm, across these two rollers, over the erase head. Then it, it goes across the video head, in through the guide, and the little control track head is up there. The tape then goes over the audio erase head. It then goes on to the audio record and replay head. You don't have a separate replay head like maybe a, a posh audio recorder because you have the vision recorded here and the sound recorded here. So there's a vision sound spacing and if you had a separate playback head that would change between record and playback. Although there is actually an audio monitoring head on the back of the tape to prevent uh, the tape being scratched. Uh, it does sound a bit muffled but the theory is the less that you have touching the front surface of the tape the le less likely it is to be damaged. The tape then passes between the capstan which rotates and the pinch roller. And the pinch roller engages the tape in the capstan and pulls the tape through. The tape passes around the, the tape counter behind the tension arm and then up on the take-up spool. Before any two-inch tape was loaded onto the machine, the tape path was cleaned. First the guide, all the rotating rollers and of course all the stationary heads and other guides. The video head itself was cleaned. To do this the drum was turned manually. And you'd look at your tissue and you can see there is quite a bit of material coming off. To clean the control track head, which actually goes up there, it's situated here, that has to be cleaned. The tape guide, also known as, as a canoe because of its shape, has to be cleaned. And it is important to clean this, because if we look at uh, the guide in close-up, you can see that there is one V slot, and the tape is pushed into that and into the tape heads. There are two other thin slots here. Air is supplied to the machine for the air bearing. That also goes past a venturi which generates a vacuum which is applied to these two slots here. So the tape is actually sucked against the guide. It is then pushed in against the head. The guide itself can be moved. It can be moved up and down by this control here. It can be moved in and out electronically there's a control to do that and there is also an automatic servo to do that for you. Of course the audio heads have to be cleaned as well. Not forgetting the monitor stack that goes on the back of the tape. The capstan is cleaned. On this machine we can actually spin it up to speed and then carefully clean it. Finally the last guide and if the timer wheel is metal we can actually clean that as well. Although quad tapes are very heavy, a 90 minute spool weighs 10 kilograms, they need to be handled with some care. When taking them out of the box, 
you need to take the weight on the upper flange and you need to be careful not to squeeze the two flanges together. Uh, and this brand, in fact, has a foam insert in the upper to make sure there's no damage to the top surface. This is very important should there be a thread wind because it could get damaged. And when the head in the two inch machine comes round and catches this damage, it can actually cut the tape in half. The tape's put onto the supply side of the machine and locked in place. Before threading the tape, you need to release the reel brakes, and there's a foot pedal to do that. A small amount of the tape is unrolled. It goes round the tension arm, over the two rollers here, then over the arrays head. Then it goes down in between the guide and the video head, then across the audio stack between the capstan and pinch roller, round the timer wheel, then round the tension arm here, up onto the take-up spool, <coughs> where we then tighten it up. <coughs> We're now ready to uh, play the tape. first thing we adjust is the tracking and to do this we look at the RF coming off the tape and the idea is to get the playback heads to play exactly down the recorded stripes and to do this we adjust the tracking control until we have the maximum RF level off the tape. Uh, we're also looking to get the top of the response flat so it may not be quite the maximum once the tracking is right, we need to adjust the geometry of the canoe. Uh, we have a little control here to move it up and down. And we move the uh, guide in and out, which is called tip penetration, with an electrical control here. If the guide is incorrectly adjusted, we can actually see the effects of this on the picture. And certainly the first stage of the picture coming off the tape it will introduce timing errors which can be shown on a monitor and although we do have electronic cor correctors the time based correctors to correct this we still like to get the uh, picture correct first uh, although we can adjust it by actually looking at the picture straight from, from the tape we do actually look at the error signals from our time based correctors again looking at our little uh, scope here which uh, by the way is called a, an A scope we can switch it round to look at the time-based corrector, which is known as an Amtec. So I can look at the Amtec error, and I can adjust the guide height and the tip penetration to give minimum errors on that. And we actually do have an automatic servo for the, for the guide on this machine. When making a recording on quad, you had to set the geometry right. The tip penetration was set to a preset position by turning this flag over that now says play to the record position known as record tips. You then had to adjust the guide height yourself. So you made a recording and the error in the guide height could be seen on the waveform monitor by looking at the red patch. You then adjust the guide height to take out half the error that was there because half of it was due to playback and half of it due to record, then you'd make another recording and you'd carry on until eventually you could make no more improvement uh, and then you'd have the best geometry for making recording. Right, that completes the mechanical adjustments of the uh, machine. We now need to uh, adjust all the electric circuits to get uh, nice pictures at the output at the correct levels. So the first thing we do, looking at DMOD out, is we adjust the overall video level. That's the easy bit of the adjustments made. As mentioned earlier, there are four heads with four channels, uh, and the head happens to be a high impedance circuit, so it, it resonates. So we have a circuit to anti-resonate this resonance to give us a smooth response. Uh, and these actually affect the colour parts of the picture and we need to make adjustments on each channel to compensate for this. You can actually do each channel in turn but there is a, a quick way of doing it. 
There's also another circuit called the Autochroma, which actually keeps the saturation the same if the signal coming off the tape should vary. The first adjustment you make is to get this circuit in the middle of its range. Looking at the yellow bar, you adjust the master equaliser. We turn the master equaliser control fully anti-clockwise and we turn it up slowly, looking at the uh, level of the yellow bar. It, ri it should rise quickly and then dip down and rise again. And at the bottom of that dip is the correct setting. But what often happens as here, we've got to set it ourselves manually, uh, looking at the A-scope display. Uh, the bars should be about a third of the way up. The circuits that compensate for the resonance of the head are tuned circuits. The frequency setting of that circuit is actually set by heads maintenance, the people who set the uh, tip position for the record tips. <clears throat> but the damping on the circuit we adjust ourselves um, with each tape to give uh, a correct response. So we turn those fully anti-clockwise, then on head channel 1 we adjust it so that this, the amplitude of the yellow and blue bars are identical, then go into a flat response and look in two fields. We then, starting at the other end, head 4, we adjust the other channels to match the one we've just adjusted. Finally going back to two line response we can actually then set the saturation. Then finally we have to adjust the vision levels at the output of the machine. So we come to the, what's called the proc amp and we, we can adjust the black level to make it correct and the luminance level to make it correct. And looking on the vector scope we can adjust the phase to be correct and finally we adjust the sound to be zero level. OK, we're around the back of the machine now, and as mentioned earlier, one of the unique features of two-inch videotape machines is that they have air supply to them to form the pressure for the air bearing and also a vacuum for the guide. Hopefully clean, dry air is supplied at 50 pounds per square inch or higher to the back of the machine. It first comes through this filter in case there is some moisture or other particles in it. There's a regulator where we can adjust the pressure so that it's exactly 50 pounds per square inch. That is then supplied to the head bearing. It also blows past a venturi which supplies a vacuum to the guide. Now obviously this is a weak vacuum uh, and the vacuum is only actually present when there is tape there to stop a free flow of air. And round here is the dial which indicates the vacuum in the canoe or the tape guide. And as you can see it's calibrated in inches of water, not pounds per square inch, because it is a fairly weak vacuum. And if the tape is removed from the guide, you can see as now that the, pressure, the vacuum disappears completely.